In previous modules, we've looked at how we can calculate the present value or future value of any cash flow. In the previous module, we looked at calculating the present value and future value of a series of cash flows. What we found then is that we have to multiply or divide each cash flow by the interest rate factor, 1 plus R, to the power of the number of periods that we need to move that cash flow forward or backward in time. But what if there are lots of cash flows? This would become very tedious if we wanted to work out the present value or the future value of this many cash flows. We'll look at how we can do that using a shortcut in the next module. For this module, we're looking at perpetuities, which are cash flows that continue indefinitely or in perpetuity. Not only would it be tedious to try and work out the present value of a large number of cash flows, it's literally impossible to calculate the present value of an infinite stream of cash flows using the techniques that we've looked at so far. However, there is a shortcut that will allow us to work out the present value of an infinite stream of cash flows. Just to make the diagrams a bit easier to follow, we'll just show the first few cash flows of the perpetuity. Now, it doesn't make any sense to talk about the future value of a perpetuity. This would be an infinitely large number, infinitely far into the future. However, it is possible to calculate the present value of an infinite stream of cash flows. The reason for that is that as those cash flows move further and further into the future, they are discounted more and more, and the present value of a far distant cash flow approaches zero. Before we look at the formula that we need to calculate the present value of a perpetuity, it's important to note that each cash flow occurs at the end of each period. So the first cash flow occurs at the end of period one, and so on. This is important because the formulas that we will use in this and the next module are all based on the assumption that each cash flow occurs at the end of a period. If that's not going to be the case, then we need to make an adjustment and we'll talk about that sort of adjustment in the next module. The formula for the present value of a perpetuity is this, probably the simplest formula that we will use in this entire subject. The present value for perpetuity is just the constant cash flow divided by the interest rate. 